The next step in the second round now is going to take the Kern observation and combine it with the Kalman gain to come up with the new state matrix or the current state matrix that we should call it, the updated values for position and velocity of the plane that we're tracking. First, we need to take in the observation. Again, we have a C matrix there, which in this case is simply going to be the identity matrix because this is only meant to convert this matrix into the correct matrix to put it right here and have it match the Kalman gain matrix. So here we have no problem. We can simply multiply the identity matrix times the new observation matrix, the Y matrix, the new observation. And in the, let's see here, position Y is at 45.50, velocity Y is 285 for round two. So the position be 45.50 and velocity is going to be 285. So we have a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 1, which will give us a 2 by 1, which is going to go right here. And we're going to add 0 to that because, again, in this example, we're going to call our, all the errors 0. Now, when we multiply that, we get simply a matrix that looks like this. 4550 for position and 285 for velocity, which is then going to be plugged into the matrix over here. And now we're ready. The new state matrix is going to be equal to the old state matrix at least not the old I should say but the predicted state matrix of round two which was 4555.5 for the position and 284 for velocity we add to that the Kalman gain which is this matrix right here 0 0.300 0, 0, 0 and 0 0.291 and we're going to multiply that times the observation matrix, which we have as 4550, 285, minus the H matrix. Now the H matrix in this case is still going to be the identity matrix times the previous, or I shouldn't say previous, but the predicted state matrix, which is this matrix right here, 4555.5 and 284. All right, simplifying this, we get the following. This becomes the matrix 455.5, 284, plus. Now, the first thing we need to do is subtract these from one another. Of course, when you multiply times identity matrix, you get the same matrix back. So we simply get this minus this. So we multiply the Kalman gain times the difference between the observed value and the predicted value. So this minus that, that gives us a minus 5.5, and this minus that gives us a, a 1. Oh, let's see here, that's a positive 1, and this is a minus, this is bigger than this, so that's a minus 5.5. So this comes the following, this is equal to 4555.5284 plus now we have to multiply this so this times this this times that 0 0.3 0 0.3 times 5.5 that's 1.65 uh, let's write it as a minus 1.7 I'll write it with one decimal place and this times that when we round that off that would be a plus 0 0.3 and when we add this together, so now we can add this together, so we have to subtract 1.7 from this. This becomes 455, and that would be 38. Four, eight, yep, that would be correct, and this becomes 284.3. Now this is now our current state matrix. This is the adjusted position and velocity based on the Kalman gain method for round two. So that's actually the objective for round two is to come up with that. Now we still have to adjust or recalculate a new process covariance matrix to be ready for round three. And of course this then will be become, this will then become the previous state matrix for round three as we calculate the new state matrix in round three. But this tells us that using the Kalman gain, we have a new estimated position and new estimated velocity based on the Kalman gain principles. And that's how we do that. And that's how we move forward through the round. So in the next video, we're going to then find a new process covariance matrix and then get ready for round three.